Good morning to all that's listening in on me today. This is a day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Do we have any glad listeners out there on this morning? Do we have any praisers listening in on this morning? The reason I ask that question is because God made this day just for you. And that's why we call it the present. Once again, I'm Bishop John McDowell Sr., the pastor of the Antioch Mount Olive Free Will Baptist Church, where Mother Patricia McDowell is the first lady. Hallelujah. Happy Mother Day to all the mothers that's listening in on this morning. Well, today uh, uh, I will be come to you with the Lord's help from the Old Testament book, 2 Kings, the fourth chapter. And I'm blessed to have my lovely wife with me here this morning to to share with you the selected scriptures coming from that fourth chapter. And it's time we're going to ask that Mother McDowell come and share with you those words. Good morning and happy Mother's Day to all mothers. God is good. I will be reading from the New Living Translation, 2 Kings chapter 4, verses 14 through 20, and then going down to verses 29 and 30. Starting in chapter 14, I mean verse 14. Later, Elijah asked Gehazi, what can we do for her? Gehazi replied, she doesn't have a son, and her husband is an old man. Call her back again, Elijah told him. When the woman returned, Elijah said to her as she stood in the doorway, next year at this time, you will be holding a son in your arms. No, Lord, she cried. Oh, man of God, don't deceive me and get my hopes up like that. But sure enough, the woman soon became pregnant. And at that time, the following year, she had a son, just as Elijah had said. One day when her child was older, he went out to visit his father, who was working with the harvesters. Suddenly, he replied, my head hurts, my head hurts. His father said to one of his servants, carry him home to his mother. So the servant took him home and his mother held him on her lap. But around noon time, he died. Going down to 29 and 30. Then Elijah said to Gehazi, get ready to travel. Take my stuff and go. Do not talk to anyone along the way. Go quickly and lay the stuff on the child's face. But the boy's mother said, as surely as the Lord lives and you yourself live, I won't go home unless you go with me. So Elijah returned with her. The word of God for the people of God. Certainly we I thank Mother McDowell for reading the scripture on this morning. Please allow me to pray. Dear Heavenly Father, it's, it's me again, standing in the need of prayer. 
Father, as always, I look to the hills which come in all my help and all my strength because I know I can do nothing on my own. So now, Father, as I look toward the hills, this is my desire that you rise up off our throne and walk to the edge of glory. Look down on my face and allow your Holy Spirit to rest upon me. Crucified flesh, tame tongue that no man can tame. The words of truth may flow from these lips. Now may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be accepted in thy sight, O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. We do honor the Spirit of the Lord on this day. We thank God for another opportunity to come before you with a word from the Lord. If you once again look at that 30th verse of 2 Kings, the fourth chapter, which says, but the boy's mother said, as surely as the Lord live, and you yourself live, I won't go home unless you go with me. So Elijah returned with her. I'll be drawing my subject matter from the third part of that verse, which says, I won't go home unless you go with me. Well, the King James Version says it this way, I will not leave thee. So if I was to draw a subject matter from that short part of that verse, it would be anybody just won't do. Anybody just won't do. Early in this chapter, as the story unfolds, you'll see in the eighth verse, the actions that set the tone of this woman's impact on her family's life. Listen to what the eighth verse says. And it fell on a day that Elijah passed through Shechem, where a great woman and her husband lived. And she sustained him to eat bread. And so it was that as oft as he passed by, he turned in hither to eat bread. If you notice, the writer inserts a word which describes this woman. He said that she was a great woman. Now one may ask the question, what was it that made this woman so great? After all, if she's a great woman, why wasn't her name mentioned? Well, Proverbs 31 and 30 through verse 31 tells us that favor is deceitful and beauty is vain. But a woman that fears the Lord, she shall be praised. Give her the fruits of her hands and let her work praise her in the gates. Here, this woman, she discovers the ability that allowed her to impact 
the surrounding area without dictating to her where her real greatness came from. Even in a life that was no doubtfully remarkable busy, she allowed her little duties of her life to relate her and keep her going strong and it did not keep her from being low. Although she was a wealthy woman in the city, she was gifted with a kind heart that while she, her focus was on the center of her home, she reached out into the world that needed her beyond the four walls of her home. Now that's what we need to learn to do in our churches today. We must learn to reach out before the four walls to the needed that's all around us. That one reads a story laid out to us in this seventh chapter of Kings. We find that this great woman had an incredible sense of self-control. She's the one that knew how to deal with all the tests of life that came her way. It shows us that how excellent her control was handled in the utmost of her life. And it also displayed the excellence of inner character. But there came a day in her life in which every fiber in her soul would be tested. How many of you know that whether you're a man or woman, as long as you live, one day every fiber in your soul will be tested by a sudden void of someone you love in your life. We find that the prophet Elijah was traveling through the land of Shechem one day and having stopped at the house as they mentioned a little house he was given a great meal by this little woman. Soon it became a ritual that every time he came through the country he would stop there and have a meal with this family from Shechem. As I look at that, it reminds me of the days of old whenever I was small and there was only a few churches in the neighborhood. We had these circuit preachers that went around from church to church once a month. But every time they came to town, there was always somewhere that they could lay their hat, rest, and have a meal. There were just two in this family, the great woman and her husband. After several visits, Elisha returned and found her incredible surprise that this family had built a small room above them for this wandering prophet. When he came to visit, he would not only have a place to sit down and eat, but he would also have a room where he could rest and be comforted. So the man of God was determined one day to return blessing for blessing. Well, Matthew 10 and 41 tells us, he that received a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. And he that received a righteous man in the name of a righteous man shall receive a righteous man reward. In other words, when you treat a man and woman of God, right? Good things will begin to happen 
in your life. When you treat a righteous man, a woman of God, good things begin to happen in your life. When you treat your neighbor right, good things begin to happen in your life. Now, am I right about it? So, Elisha asked Gehazi, what can we do for this woman? Gehazi replied that she doesn't have a son and a husband is a little too old. It was then that an answer came almost like a bowl of lightning from heaven. And Elisha pronounced a promise that a child will soon grace this home. And so it was sometime later a little baby entered into the home of this family. As the years rapidly flew by, I'm assured that as Elisha traveled through uh, the country, and every time he stopped by the home of this great woman, I'm assured that he became acquainted and established a relationship with this young man. He came by and as he had pronounced the next year a baby was born and I'm so glad that when the Lord speaks he can't lie but as it reads in the 8th verse that this young man went out one day to work with the reapers and his father. Apparently, the young boy had grown up and had a little age on him because he was able to do a little labor in the fields. My brother and the sister, there will come a time when everything is going smoothly and every day will be just alike. And then there'll come a time in our life when years of joy and sorrow will be concentrated into one day. So it came in the house at Shechem. Elisha came and it was a joyful time. When the child was born, it was a joyful time. It was a memorable time. And it was one of those days that all everything was seeming going right. But there will also come a time when it seemed like nothing is going your way. But we find here that although they remember the joyful time, there came a day that this child was lost and dead to death and we've come again and life was regained. It didn't take no more than a moment for all this to happen. The brightest day suddenly be claimed, cloudy and disastrous. The day was quickened with darkness and sorrow and the shadow of death. It came a cry from the mist of innocent work in the field. Life was progressing well. Yet surrounding her seemed a safe environment. Then trouble struck. How many of you know things will be going good with you one day? And after a while, you can get a phone call. You can hear a cry from the next room. And you hear somebody holler out with pain going through the body. But I stopped by the day to let you know that everybody will have days like this woman, this young man had left home early that morning, running 
full of lights uh -huh. Like the average kid does uh -huh. We went out to the field uh -huh. Where his father was uh -huh. I can see him right now uh -huh. Getting in the way uh -huh. Of everybody uh -huh. And his father began uh -huh. To train him uh -huh. And show him how to be uh -huh. A man uh -huh. But early uh -huh. Early in the morning uh -huh. They came uh, a cry in this child I had uh, a body full of life uh, was brought in from the field uh, cold uh, and lifeless uh, only with one complaint uh, flowing from his lip uh, my head uh, my head uh, his head uh, was previously in pain uh, impossible came uh, from a heat uh, in that field uh, because during that time uh, it was a hot season uh, it could have been a heat stroke uh, that caught him uh, while he was out there uh, because he was exposed uh, to the elements uh, of nature the Bible tells us uh, that her her only child uh, came home uh, Crying uh, about his head, uh, I can see him now uh, sitting down uh, in a chair uh, like a mother will uh, do. Uh, I can see him now uh, stretching out her arms, uh, beckoning him uh, to come over beside her. Uh, and as he laid his head, uh, and he laid his head uh, down. I can see her right now, a stroking, a stroke in the head of her son. Then after a while, after a while, after a while, life can seep from the body of the child. But then, even in the midst of all this woman's trouble, this great woman, uh, she had uh, an incredible ability uh, to handle the good days uh, of life. Uh, and she had an incredible ability uh, to handle the troubled days uh, that came her way. Uh, and if we think uh, we can hide our life uh, away from the hurts uh, and the calamity uh, of this world, uh, we are living in uh, a pipe dream uh, Because if you uh, Have never had uh, And rain in your life uh, Wait a while uh, Trouble forces its way uh, Into every man uh, In woman's life uh, Regardless to uh, Where you work at uh, Regardless to uh, Where you live at uh, Regardless to uh, How much money you may have in your pocket uh, trouble, uh, trouble uh, will invade the ranks uh, of the average uh, a man and woman. Uh, we live uh, in a society uh, that's full uh, of corruption, uh, and it became uh, more familiar as we live out uh, life history today. Uh, the Bible deals. Uh, with issues uh, back in those times uh, and it's clearly uh, very clearly uh, that we're dealing with trouble uh, and this century uh, look at what's going on uh, all around us now uh, everybody uh, shut in uh, scared to come out uh, everybody uh, is taking cover uh, because uh, of the thing that's going around uh, us right now uh, but it just didn't start uh, but here today uh, troubles uh, troubles uh, gotta board the bus uh, a long 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 uh, time ago uh, and it journeyed into uh, the year 200 uh, or 2000 uh, and 20 uh, and get ready uh, and get ready 
Because tomorrow I'll have trouble. Still, I wait you. The devil was working then. And apparently somewhat successful at what he did. He continues to set the same traps for men and women that he set yesterday and he's setting them today. But how many of you know that prayer is a weapon that the devil just can't figure out when it's uttered from a righteous man or woman. It's been said an ounce of a mother is worth a pound of preacher. And there's been many mothers who have unfallibly, unfallibly worked to rear up their children. She taught them manners, gave them love, taught them where they can learn to reverence God. And by doing that, she set a path in their life for tomorrow. I am convinced that a praying woman Our praying mother is able to overcome any loss and impact on her child's life. That's why we should never underestimate a mother that's fueled by prayer yes, sir. because she can move mountains. Religious leader Boyd Packer quoted, there are few things more powerful than the prayers of a righteous mother. This mother and her son died in her lap. And when she, he died on her lap, she got up After stroking him, talking to him, and praying, she went upstairs and she laid him on the bed of the man of God. Shut the door behind him and she went out. This showed the faith of this woman she prepared her son for resurrection, not for burial. She had undoubtedly heard that Elisha had raised the widow's son at Zarephath. And now she believes that she laid her son on the prophet's bed Death will soon have to let him go. How many of you know that when you serve God and serve him with all your heart, soul, and mind, whatever got hold of you in Jesus' name, it got to turn you loose. If it's finances that's bogging you down in the name of Jesus it, it got to turn you loose if it's health problem that's slowing you down in the name of Jesus it got to turn you loose if it's anxiety or depression in Jesus' name, it got to turn you loose. 
If it's an attack on your ministry, in Jesus' name, it got to tear you loose. Oh, somebody tell God, thank you. God spoke to Isaiah in his 54th chapter and said that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. So with that being said, anything that come up against you, it got to turn you loose. Now let me move on. Now if you notice, the woman she never told her husband about her son, but she only asked him to send one of her servants and a donkey so that she can go find this man of God and bring him back. How many of you know? I don't care how many people you know. How many people you know how to pray? They know how to pray. How many of you know? Sometimes anybody just won't do it. So she told him that she wanted a servant in the donkey. And I know there were probably more religious leaders around in the city. When he questioned her about her journey, he told her that it's neither a new moon, a festival, nor the Sabbath. But her response to him wasn't concerning the problem, her son being dead, her response was, it's all right. She told the servant, after he had gathered up and got the carriage, he said, now I want you to drive fast and don't slow down unless I tell you I can see him right now traveling fast and apparently when Eliza had passed through a ship on that morning Apparently he hadn't got too far ahead of them. So I can see it right now sitting there on her chariot or on her mule riding toward to catch up with Elisha. I can see Elisha right now looking back and seeing Someone approaching him very fast when she caught up Elisha in the mountain. She fell down on the ground and grabbed him by his feet. And in his eye, he began to push her away. But the man of God looked at his servant and said, leave her alone. Something is troubling her deep down on the inside. Let her go because I don't, I don't even discern what's happening right now. I'm confused. Seems like God would have told me uh, what's troubling this lady uh, before she got here. Uh, how many of you know uh, just because uh, you a man uh, and woman of God uh, with a strong period uh, of discernment, uh, how many of you know uh, it doesn't matter uh, whether you speak 
speak uh, in the pulpit uh, every Sunday morning. Uh, it doesn't matter uh, whether you're in prayer meeting uh, every day to the week. Uh, it doesn't matter uh, whether you're strong deacon uh, that have a prayer uh, as strong as thunder. Uh, it doesn't matter uh, where you speak in tongues uh, like angels. Uh, how many of you know uh, that God don't uh, tell you everything? Uh, God tells those uh, that he want to tell uh, when he want to tell them uh, just because uh, you walk around uh, with a Bible uh, prophesied. Uh, prophetic word uh, there's something uh, God just don't uh, tell you uh, God spoke uh, to this woman uh, uh, to this mother uh, he told her uh, all about uh, her problem uh, that's why uh, she was able uh, to get up uh, with calm uh, her son uh, on uh, the prophet's bed. Uh, that's why uh, she didn't tell uh, her husband uh, what was going on. Uh, so uh, after she told uh, Elijah what uh, was going on, uh, told him, uh, told him uh, about her son uh, Elisha. Uh, Elisha, uh, he began uh, to ponder on this thing, uh, then told uh, Gehazi, uh, take my staff, uh, take my staff, uh, go, uh, go, uh, go to the home uh, of this woman, uh, of this mother, uh, and take my staff uh, and lay it, uh, put it on the sun's head uh, and it should uh, rise up uh, rise up uh, and he wanted the woman uh, he wanted the mother uh, to go back uh, with him uh, but God uh, but God uh, had told her uh, that uh, anybody uh, just won't do uh, for the scripture has said uh, that in the last days uh, said the man of prophet uh, Joel uh, he want to pour his spirit uh, out on all flesh uh, and that began uh, at the day of Pentecost uh, and he's still pouring his red spirit uh, out on mothers today uh, so she knew uh, that even if Gehazi uh, uh, went back uh, she knew uh, it just won't gonna work uh, so I see the woman now uh, I can see her doing like Jacob uh, whenever he was wrestling uh, that angel uh, he said uh, I won't let go uh, until you bless me uh, so she held long uh, and then they went back uh, slowly to the house uh, well we find uh, that Elisha uh, was looking for great news uh, when Gehazi uh, came back uh, but he told him uh, the little boy uh, is still dead uh, he's still laying there uh, so when uh, so when uh, Elisha got there uh, he did uh, he did uh, just like Jesus did uh, the crowd uh, at Peter's house uh, when his mother uh, was sick uh, he told them uh, to stay right here uh, and he went upstairs uh, and closed the door uh, behind him uh, he positioned himself uh, on the little boy uh, mouth to mouth uh, hand to hand uh, chest to chest uh, expecting something uh, to happen uh, the little boy's body uh, got warm uh, but he still lay there uh, I can see him right now uh, says something uh, that I've done uh, didn't go right uh, maybe you were thinking uh, if I had followed uh, the instruction uh, 
God for this religious mother uh, making things to work uh, the first time. Uh, so he went down, uh, downstairs, uh, and I can see him right now, uh, pasting, uh, pasting, uh, back to the fourth, uh, upon the floor, uh, sometime, uh, sometime, uh, in the midnight hour, uh, when trouble you have to get up, uh, you have to get up uh, and place uh, the floor. Uh, he found himself uh, down there pacing uh, back and forth. Uh, and I believe, uh, I believe, uh, I believe uh, that while he uh, was pacing the floor, uh, I can believe right now uh, in his spirit uh, and his uh, spiritual uh, imagination uh, he was saying to himself uh, how would my mentor uh, he lied to it uh, so I can see him right now uh, tapping in uh, that double portion uh, of the spirit uh, that came down uh, to him uh, from his mentor uh, then he went back uh, upstairs uh, he went back uh, upstairs uh, after he uh, reposition uh, himself uh, he went back up uh, and he fell down uh, off the board uh, mouth to mouth uh, eye to eye uh, hand to hand uh, chest to chest uh, after a while uh, the little boy uh, he coughed uh, he sneezed uh, seven times uh, then he got up uh, the spiritual revelation uh, behind that. Uh, see, the first time uh, he tried, uh, he tried it one time. Uh, he gave hockey games, I had tried it one time. I uh, thought it was two times. Uh, then he tried it. Uh, so he said the third time uh, it's going to have to work. Uh, so the third time uh, was completion uh, for him. Uh, but the little boy uh, that laid there. Uh, it took seven sneezes uh, to be a completion uh, for him. Uh, aren't you glad? Uh, aren't you glad uh, that when God uh, gets ready? To do a work in you, it has to be done his way. And anybody just won't do. He told Jehazi, go tell the mother, come on up. And take her son. And she came up and found that life was back. And a son. My brothers and sisters, that's why every man and every woman and every child should have a covering in your life. Because when it comes to healing, deliverance, and demonic strongholds being removed in life. Anybody just won't do. The Bible also recorded in the book of Luke, the seventh, seventh chapter, verse 11. In the city of Nain, Near the gate of the city, there was a man being carried out, a mother's only son. She was a widow. And many people traveled in support with her 
as they went to bury her son. But one day Jesus was passing by. And he saw his mother crying. Heartbroken. Grievous and sorrowful. Jesus didn't have to ask her, what can I do for you? Because he knew. So he just walked over to the coffin. Touched the coffin. The young man sat up and began to talk. And he delivered him to her mother. Mothers, no matter what you're going through, no matter what awaits you, know that Jesus is the answer. You tried everything else. You've been to your pastor, you've been to the deacons, you talk with the prayer warriors. Sometimes anybody just won't do. Sometimes you have to do like Elijah. Go in, close the door. Position yourself and talk to God. Prayer, prayer will bring your children out of a dead situation. But you got to be a woman, a mother of the sister's faith. Because it's the substance of faith. Let me say this again. It's the substance of faith. Let me say that again. It's the substance of faith that ushers you into the presence of the Lord. Certainly, we thank God. for you listening in on this day. And as always, it's my desire that those of you that's listening, that I offer you the free gift of salvation. No, you may not have been a perfect mother. No, you may not have been a perfect father or child. Crossing every T and dot and every I in life. But today, it can not only be Mother's Day to you, it can be your day of salvation. I don't know what you've heard. But do know that you don't have to have it all together. All you got to do is believe and confess Jesus the Christ today and thou shalt be saved. Don't let this opportunity pass you by. Today I'd like to leave this prayer of coverage to all that are listening to this day, especially the mothers. 
both high and wise God. Give of all good and perfect gifts. We come to you today in a humble and submissive way. Realizing that you are the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except by you. Father, there may be some listening in on this day that don't know you for the pardon of their sins. Father, I ask you, Lord, please don't give up on them because you didn't give up on me. I believe that there are some, some religious and righteous mothers that have been praying the prayer of faith. And their child go wayward. But Father God, in the name of Jesus. As his mother stayed on her knees. As she paced the floor in the midnight hour. We ask, Lord, that you adhere to that prayer. Touch that husband. Touch that child. Bless that home. that only you can bless. And Father, just as Elisha passed through the country and stopped at his Shunammite's woman's house, Father, I ask right now, that whenever you pass through the city or town of the mothers that's listening, while you're calling on others, please don't pass them by. Stop if it ain't nothing but a little while. Because, Lord, your presence for one second could put everything that's not of you to fly. We thank you, Lord, for this Mother's Day. We thank you for mothers all over the world. This is my prayer in Jesus' name. I pray. Amen. And hallelujah. Certainly we thank God for each and every one of you. And we say it to you that may God bless you and may heaven continuously smile upon you. Once again, happy Mother's Day and have a fantastic Mother's Day. God bless you.